Let's go for it. Okay, um, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm just going to introduce myself really quickly. My name is Naomi Templey. Um, I'm a growth and innovation consultant. Uh, I spend about 50% of my time working directly with um, clients, usually in the tech, digital and creative sectors. And the other 50% of my time is working on entrepreneurship programs. Um, I've you generally work doing those with universities, but I also um, have run a number of other programs uh, specifically for um, tech, digital and creative businesses. Uh, in particular, one of them uh, which I did with Host in Media City, which was called Freelance Her, and that was specifically for female freelancers and founders in the tech and digital sector. So I'm going to share my screen if I can work out how to use Blackboard. Um, just quickly though, I am going to ask you a quick question. Um, so who here, and we're going to do a poll, who here has an idea for a business? And that's a question to everyone. So it's just a yes or no answer. Um, so who here has a business idea? If you could just do yes or no. Okay, so there's a few of you. Okay, that's good to hear. Good, 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 good. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question, actually, um, if you'll allow me. So the next question is, um, who here works for a business? When I say that, um, I'm, I'm meaning who here is, is, is potentially uh, an entrepreneur in an organization. So uh, we've got some people that will be looking um, at uh, setting up on their own um, and already perhaps are going on that journey. But some of you will be working with in an organization. So I'd just be interested in that. OK, so I'm going to share uh, my screen now and I'm going to talk to you. Um, I'm going to keep coming back uh, because my sessions are always uh, very interactive. And today's workshop is all about how to turn an idea into a business. Um, it's never been easy or cheap to build new products and services. Um, but being a successful innovator, entrepreneur or intrapreneur is still incredibly tough. OK. Um, this is a is a, a, a great quote uh, that I like from uh, the guys who who uh, wrote the Strategizer series. So remember that then when ten entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs think they have a great vision, one of them is onto something promising, while the other nine are merely hallucinating. Okay, so uh, that that's definitely something um, to, to think about. Uh, and also, it, it's really easy to convince yourself. Um, that, that customers, people will be falling over themselves for your product or service when they most likely won't. Um, and what I'm going to be going over um, the next hour or so is really looking at how you can um, go through a series of steps uh, to, to sort of uh, mitigate uh, certain issues and problems, but also really get you to think about um, the problems that you're solving with your idea. Um, so really quick tip is don't waste time refining your vision into a business plan uh, verify it with customers and partners first okay so i'm going to quickly come back to um the, the uh, chat unfortunately i can't see where your face is um i, I usually do these type, type of things on, on zoom uh, but i'm just going to come back to the chat and see if we've got any questions in here so um, please ask along um, as we go. Um, I know Richard, you're you're looking at working with um, associate artists. Um, anybody here want to to, to quickly share um, a, a, the, the seedling of an idea that they're looking at working with, even if it was just one word? Um, who here has has an idea for something um, that they would want to share with the group? And you don't really need to go into great detail. It could be really just simply, like Richard has says, uh, he wants to work with associate artists. Um, so, you, Richard, you've also said social engagement. Um, so we've got somebody here interested in ed tech. Uh, anybody else? 
Anybody with their idea that they wanted to just, just really, even if it was just one word, craft beer and pizza, that sounds amazing, Chris Broomfield. Um, so social subscribing, uh, e-commerce, anybody else? Website designer. Okay. So I have a question for, for, for uh, all of you, but before um, we, we talk about that, um, I want you to really have a think about um, all the people that have got a business idea. Um, do you understand um, what problem that you're solving for a customer is? And that's a question to, to everybody. Um, because if you, if you have uh, an idea for a business, you need to be able to articulate what problem that you're solving is. So, for example, um, I have um, a mug here, and um, the problem that this mug solves for me is it keeps my coffee warm. Um, it allows me to, to drink my coffee from something. Um, it's got a handle, which is big, um, and also the mug is quite big, and I can put plenty of coffee in there. So it's solving quite a few different problems. So the people that have sort of said yes, um, so Richard, you just said um, your business solves fundamental social issues or maybe can help a little. Now, when I, I, I just to give you a bit of context here, I, I've, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of um, business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, lots of people um, I know that have made it, um, lots of people haven't. Um, and the ones that, that um, I, I meet uh, and the ones that seem to get traction are the ones that are able to really say what problems that they're solving. OK, um, I would also add in there is it, especially uh, on some of the entrepreneurship programs I've worked in. Um, I see people come to programs with an idea and that idea can change very, very quickly. So don't fall in love with your very first idea. Uh, one thing that you have to do is you've got to prototype radically different value propositions and business model alternatives before you narrow down on um, superior options, okay? Um, so with regards to the, the, the problem uh, that you're solving, um, a number of things that, that you need to think about is um, how your idea will, will serve society. Um, your, your idea could be great for the community, it could be great for the nation, it could be uh, for a, a small amount of people. Um, so you, you need to be able to say, um, and this is why I, I really love, um, you know, business model canvases. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the um, uh, Alex Oster, Oster um, books, the Strategizer series. Um, and they're all very, very much about simpli simplifying things, but also testing ideas. OK, so question to uh, all the people that have they've actually sort of said that they have business ideas. Um, who here has actually um, asked and had conversations with people um, to test whether their idea is something that could be feasible? And, and that's a question to, to everybody. Um, because uh, and also I, I would also say is those questions need to be people that aren't particularly um, people that you know directly. They need to be um, a really broad um, spectrum of different people. Um, I, I met um, yeah so Chris on, absolutely on on the general public um, on also um, you know you will have in your your mind a, an idea of who your ideal customers might be but actually by having conversations with people that uh, customer base might be completely different okay so being able to articulate um, what problem you're solving but then also um, looking at the, the type of customers is really really important one thing I would also say um, and the amount of um, people that I come across who don't do any research with regards to their competition astounds me, okay? Um, you must research the competition. You may, never, you, you may never have heard of your idea or see anyone around doing it 
uh, but take it a step further. Do your homework and see if similar products or services exist. Um, even I've met lots of people who've said that they've done research um, and I can pretty much guarantee you can find a, an alternative in the market. Um, and, and talking about the market, you need to think about what your market is. So try and picture who your ideal customer is. OK, this is the first step to actually figuring out whether your idea fits into um, what the customers want. So research in the market. Um, you may think that you've come up with a foolproof idea, but is there a market for it? And this is really getting a, a, a deep understanding of, of who your customers here, who your customers are. Um, so I'm going to come back to the chat. Um, so I've got one here. Is it wise a thing to have a business idea about a product that you're not equipped to build? Um, absolutely. Um, I know lots and lots of people um, that have brilliant ideas, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be able to physically build them. Um, it may be, you, you know, if you have um, a great idea for an app, for example, but you're not a coder, you're going to have to um, finance somebody to, to, to build it. But, but there, there are lots of steps that you've got to take before you even get to that process. Um, the, the, the biggest thing, and we will come on to um, MVPs um, uh, later into the session, but, but really um, knowing, you know, who, who, the, who the customers are, um, and also, um, you know, really understanding what problems you're solving is the, is the first stage. Um, so, Don, you just put in a past test installation works now working to overcome technical issues. So you you're going through this at the moment, Don. Is that is is can you you can come on the mic or you can continue um, coming into the chat? But you're you're you you've done the test phase. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. And it it turned out that there were technical issues that made it so it wouldn't work. And at that okay. time, at that time, the uh, market didn't have the technology to uh, to do what I needed. And now now it's just arriving. So it's being resurrected. OK, OK. Well, and so you're going you're going to test it again. I take it once you've made those tweaks. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so, Shamsi, you've just put in here, how do you categorize the business idea, uh, which type of sectors? We, we will actually come to that. Um, but, but things to think about really initially are, and actually, Don, I'm going to come to you. So with regards to, um, you've obviously just done a test. Um, I don't know what your business idea is, but, idea is, but what problem is it solving for the customer? So uh, loneliness and isolation. OK. OK, and then I'm going to ask you another question. So you just mentioned uh, two things, loneliness and isolation. And there's, there's a lot of um, uh, press around this at the moment. Um, what is the impact of um, somebody um, being isolated and, and lonely? Have well, you looked the initial, at that? The initial, the, uh, my mother was getting very old, was too far away for me to visit regularly. Yeah. Uh, and we used to speak on the telephone every night, but I put this equipment in so that she could just press a button and mm -hmm. she came through on my PC and I'd got full vision, full audio, and I could see the room behind her to see the state of that. Okay. Um, the very fact that she realised that when she pressed the button, she was in touch meant yeah. that uh, she... Uh, suddenly didn't feel isolated anymore because she knew. so she didn't speak to me anymore it was just yeah. the reassurance that uh, she could that you, someone was there okay and and that was I, I take it just by the press of a button it was simpler and easier than than perhaps maybe logging on to zoom or something like that yes it was uh, just to folks yeah. uh, the fact that the window so occasionally yeah. it would come up with the mate, you need to reboot your PC now. Which yeah, for yeah. <laughs> a 90 odd year old was a, a little bit concerning. So so uh, another thing as well with regards to sort of like, and this is sort of a, a general comment to everybody. So, we, you know, you've identified um, a, a problem. 
that a, a customer or, or whoever is is going to to have. Um, and then it's looking at okay, um, what's the impact of me solving that problem, and then what's the impact of that impact, and and having that sort of bigger picture um, is is something that, that can really help you um, not only frame your idea. Um, but when when you've sort of gone to through through various stages, especially around market research, but also then taking that idea to market, um, being able to to say about the the impact that your your um, product can have or your service uh, is is really really powerful. Um, so, you know, we've talked about market research. Um, it, it's an important step um, to being able to sort of um, promote what you do, but also, you know, that there's so much information that you need to know about your customers. Um, so who here has heard of um, the, the business model canvas? Um, I'm going to share it on my screen just so you can all see because I think business model canvas is a really great um, basis um, for being able to, um, you know, have a something that's on one page um, and it's something that, that is always ever evolving. Um, so I'm going to show you on my screen for those of you who, who have never seen one before. So th this is essentially what a, a business model canvas is. OK, uh, you can see center stage. We've got um, a value proposition. OK, um, so this is like what's compelling about the, the proposition? What do customers, what, why do customers buy and use it? And this is really you sort of saying this is a problem and this is how I'm going to solve it. And let's pretend that this is a theatre, OK? Value proposition is centre stage, OK? If we go to um, everything that is on the left, which is key partners, key activities, key resources, and cost structure, that is what's almost like backstage. Then if we go to everything on the right, which is your customer relationships, your customer segments, your channels, and your revenue stream, that's your audience. OK, it's a really great uh, way of being able to um, articulate ideas very much so at this early stage. But also it's something that even when your, your business is up and running, it, it's something that you can um, look back on. So I'm going to talk to you um, about a couple of the things um, that are, are in this. Um, but we're going to we're going to come back to the discussion. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen again. Um, I heard the chat bleeping again. I'm not sure whether this was. Let's have a look. OK, so we've got some some people here um, who have heard of the, the Business World Canvas. So, Chris, you, you've said that you have. Um, have you actually done one, Chris? And that's a, you can either pipe up on the um, the. the yep. Yeah, oh, there we go. Good. Yeah, yeah. Have you done one, Chris? Uh, no, I haven't done one, um, but I spoke to Paul Little. Uh, who recommended that I start doing one? So I wanted to do my right market research first to yes. help me then fill in the boxes. Um, so, so, so the the great thing about um, you know, even if you before you've done the market research, um, it, it's really worth just even having a look at it now because it's something that will um, ever evolve. Um, so Eunice, you just said that can we have some examples under each box? Absolutely. Um, so if you give me a second, I'm going to um, give you some um, visual canvas uh, examples. Um, just give me one second and I will get some for you. Um, some really great ones, actually. Um, and I think it's quite nice to be able to see ones that perhaps we would also um, recognize um, as in businesses. Uh, so I'm going to bring one up for you. Um, Let's have a look. So um, I'm going to get one, probably the best one. OK, I'm going to bring up Ubers. So let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can all see it. And then I'm going to share my screen. Um, so this is the, the business model canvas for um, Uber that I'm going to give you an example of. So just give me one second. And I'm going to come back to share my screen. Here we go. There we go. OK, so you should be able to see this screen here. So this is Uber's um, business model canvas. So their key partners are and the key partners are all the people um, 
that you need to be able to deliver your value proposition, or all the all the things that you need as well. So they need payment processors, they need map tech companies, they also need investors. The key activities that Uber do, so these are all the things that they need to do to deliver their value proposition. It's all the stuff that they're doing on a daily basis, and this is platform um, development and maintenance, marketing and ads, uh, operations, uh, also hiring drivers. Um, the key resources that they need to, to deliver their value proposition is they, of course, need a tech platform, they need the driver network, they need uh, talented employees, they also need the brand, okay? Um, if we go to the, the, the value proposition, the value proposition is a, pla a platform to connect riders with drivers. Um, it's also anytime, anywhere, easy, uh, easiest way around, low cost luxury, uh, luxury. I'd probably question that, especially I was supposed to getting a, a, a taxi the other day and they were at least 10 pounds more, so I would question that. Um, they have various levels of service, um, and also for the drivers, the value proposition is earn money when you want, okay? Um, their customer relations uh, relationships are their racing system, so that's how they engage with their customers and how the customers engage with the drivers, obviously. Um, their channels are, they have the app. Um, their customer segment, so the customer segment section is, is really, that's where your um, customer profiles and buyer personas are going to come in, which we'll, we'll talk about in a sec. Um, so their customer segments are their riders, so people who need to have a, a, a ride, and also their drivers, so people who want to earn money driving. Okay, the cost structure. So these are all the things that you that Uber needs to spend money on to be able to deliver their value proposition. Okay, so they've obviously got employee payroll, they have driver payouts, there's legal fees. There's marketing and ads. There's also the tech platform costs. Their revenue streams are the surge pricing, uh, but also the pound, the, the, the pound dollar, which it, uh, or whatever currency it is in kilometer or mile. So that's essentially um, an example of a, a business that you and I would know and their business model canvas. Okay. Um, I think it's 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 no matter whichever stage you are at, it's a really good um, starting ground just to be able to um, have a look um, at, at what you need to, to think about, but also um, really getting you to focus on exactly what your your value proposition is. And essentially, your value proposition is what problem you're solving. Okay. Anybody have um, any questions so far? Any anybody here have any questions or are we happy for me to go on? Okay. Eunice, you just said it looks easy but demands a lot of work to make it easy to understand. Do you know what? I, I would I would agree with that, but actually um, sometimes people can overthink this. So so actually um, I would challenge anybody um, with a, a business idea to just look at it for 10 minutes and it's something that you will be constantly revisiting okay sometimes you can overthink this and, and I think it's a really good thing to keep revisiting it even when your your business is up and running okay so we are going to just just do a little bit of a recap so um, I've got everyone to, to think about um, what problem they're solving um, do the do your research uh, with regards to your competitors, um, but then we need to be having conversations with potential customers. And these initial conversations are really um, those really simple things about, okay, look, I've got an idea for this. Um, is it something that you would use? You know, th think about a series of questions. Think about uh, the pain points, perhaps, uh, that the customers might have and how your 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 um, your product or your service can solve those pain points. Um, it might be that it gives that person more time. Um, it might be that um, it helps that person um, perhaps be healthier. Or if we, we talk about um, Don's example, it, it might be 
um, that um, it, it challenges a, a certain uh, societal issue. So it, it's about asking questions, but it's also as well having those, those very difficult questions, even very early on, um, about whether it's something that people would pay for. Uh, another really key thing is, um, and, and this is, you know, no matter whether you're working, um, you know, within an organization, um, you must be really enthusiastic about how your business will make a difference in people's lives. OK, this is a crucial factor that you must figure out, because if you truly love your work, you'll have a bigger chance of succeeding. And I'm not saying that everybody will succeed just because they're enthusiastic, uh, but it certainly helps when you're having conversations with people. OK, so um, I'm going to come back to um, Chris, actually, because you, you have said that you have um, an, an idea. Um, have you um, got what state? What stage have you got to with regards to having conversations uh, with regard, regards to your, your business um, idea with, the, with pizzas? Was it pizzas and beer? Um, is this a, a delivery thing or is it about you going into to people's homes? Uh, so it would be from a premises. OK. Uh, and it would be uh, basically I'd offer craft beer as like mm -hmm. in a bar. Yep. Uh, but I'd also uh, sell it for people to take away like a bottle shop. Yep. OK. Uh, and, then... and the pizzas would be cooked on site for people to eat there or take away. OK. And what 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 sort of market research have you done at this very early uh, stage? Well, I've done uh, I've visited a few competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'm just about to go out and ask the public, like, interview the public. And, and are you doing that in the area that you're thinking about having this? I'm doing it in several areas that I'm thinking of. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's really good because I don't want um, to pigeonhole and like focus on one area because yeah, uh, there's maybe four or five areas where I'm considering. Um, okay. And you know, if 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 the consensus in all those areas is very, very much the same, yeah. then um, I'll just wait for premises to come available in one of those areas. And I know that it will be successful or hopefully it's successful. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's definitely uh, the, the amount of um, shops and, and um, food establishments that I, I see pop up when I, think that they don't they haven't done the research I think that's really really important especially because you're going to have an initial um, quite a large outlay um, at that very early stage um, I've got a question here from Sarah so at some point can you tell me if you're going to start a business a small business working mainly from home do you have to register a business name is there a list of things to do to start a business um, there's several several things all we're doing today is really talking about um, that very early idea stage, Sarah. Um, but what I will say, um, whether you're working from home or not, it depends on the type of business that you have. So just to give you uh, an example of, of me, Sarah, um, I'm self-employed. I have had um, limited companies uh, in the past, um, but I've just decided that I'm going to be um, self-employed so I register with HMRC under my name um, if you if you wanted to have a business and you were building a brand uh, there are considerations to make around that um, even if you um, set up a, a, a dormant um, company initially until you started trading um, and you're building a brand that the name's really important because obviously this this things like you have to check whether the domain names available um, you have to check whether the socials available um, also checking at company's house um, just to give you um, a, an idea of where it can go wrong um, I recently ran a program and there was somebody who was on the program who'd built a brand and spent a year at great expense and hadn't checked the domain names that's the first thing that I would actually do is check the domain names are available also check the socials um, but also as well there's, there's, there's lots and lots of things to think about even at that very um, you know building a brand stage as well um, but there's loads of really great advice um, on online um, especially um, on um, the Bayes website 
um, and also probably locally to you. So if you're in based, based in Greater Manchester, for example, uh, you've got organisations like the Business Growth Hub, but also the university has uh, some excellent resources and they can point you in the right direction as well. Um, so I've got another question here. What about comp competition competitors do I review? So uh, that's something that I, I have touched on. Um, with doing your homework on the competition is really, really important. OK, um, so another really great thing to, to do is to uh, do a, a Google search on a search term that somebody would do if they were looking for your products or services. So, for example, if we look at um, Chris's business idea, for example, obviously, Chris, I don't know where you where you live, but let's just say you were looking at um, opening something, uh, a pizza and beer place up in Altrincham. Um, you might put in um, pizza, restaurant, Altrincham, and it would obviously come up with a, a list of things. If it was something to, to do with, like, um, you know, somebody here mentioned um, about um, ed tech, um, there are tons and tons of ed tech companies. So that's about you, you thinking about refining your, your, your research. So it might be that you put in ed tech, but then you put in something that's more specific to uh, the problem that you're solving within the school, college or university um, specifically. It might be um, something to do with the learnings. It, it could be something else. But, you know, the market research element is really, really important. Again, um, the people, again, I've met thousands and thousands of businesses over the years. Um, and it's something to really have a think about. Again, you know, if, if you don't do your homework, um, you know, you need to see um, what else is out there. But then you also have to, need to think about if you do see something similar, um, you know, is your product or service, how difficult, how different is it to what's already on the market? Um, is it expensive to register a domain name? No, it's not. On 123 Reg, uh, you can do it for um, a couple of pounds. Um, obviously, if you're looking at doing it for longer than a year, generally they have certain deals on, so they'll try and tie you in for two years. Um, but then also you've got to think about if you were going to set up an email address, there's a cost involved in things like that as well. Um, so um, we talked about competition. Um, you know, really key thing as well is, is, is really painting a picture of who your ideal customer is. OK, this is a step to actually figuring out where your your idea fits into into the you know, consumers. So what do you know about your customers or your potential customers? And I would always advise again, you know, I know that you're all at very different stages, but even if you were, were uh, you know, you were a, an entre uh, entrepreneur uh, within an organization, um, and you were working um, and uh, you identified a problem with your existing customers, um, it might be that not all of your customers are going to use that particular service. So it might be that you pick th two or three different buyer personas and you get as much information about those customers as possible. OK, so just a couple of things to have a think about. Um, again, it, this is varying um, as to whether, you know, it's a product or a service. Um, if we use my business, for example, um, I have one of my buyer personas would be um, a university. Um, it would be a particular department within a university. It would be a particular person. And I will be solving um, the problems around. Um, it could be um, industry engagement, entrepreneurship, could be any number of things. Um, my other. Um, by a persona or customer persona, whatever you want to call it, is um, I work directly um, with with clients. So at the moment, for example, I'm working with an IoT client, um, and they are looking for routes to market. Um, they don't have a marketing department. Um, they don't have a um, someone who's looking after partnerships. So that's very much where I've come in, and that's the problems that I'm solving for that particular customer. Um, one of my other customers is a recruitment company and they are looking at new products and services um, and that's where the ideation and innovation comes in. So have a think about if you had to come up with a list of two or three different types of customers um, based on the problems that you're solving with your products or services, 
what would that look like? I think another really important thing as, as well is um, really um, thinking about, oh, right, I'm just coming back here to, um, so after two year period, I would need to keep you knowing, yes, Chris, that, that's something that you would keep doing. You, you would obviously get reminders about that, but it's something that you do have to think about because let's just say, Chris, let's say in a year's time, um, you know, you've, you've, your pizza place is up and running, um, your website's live, and actually people are doing Google searches and you're coming up in those searches um, and people are coming to your pizza place. Um, if you do not renew, your website just goes down. That's as simple as that, okay? Um, Sarah, sorry, I'm just looking at your comment. There are people like me, tourists, and and in love with a specific place. Okay, so but yeah, it's it's something that you you need to keep tabs on. And do you know what? It is not easy running a business uh, because there's lots of things you need to think about. And this is where I'm going to come to this particular point: is about finding your support. Okay, um, have you ever noticed how few successful startups were founded by just one person? Um, and I'm not saying, again, it depends on the type of business that you have. So f for me, I work on my own. I bring people in as and when I need them um, to uh, deliver on particular products, uh, you know, projects. Um, but I would also always say uh, something that's, that's also worth having a look at is, is finding um, a program of support that you can get. But also, uh, if something is bigger than you, finding somebody um, who, who, who or might be several people that can support you on, on your journey. Um, so just to go back, you, you've discovered um, you know, your idea, people like the idea. Um, you, you start developing a little bit more about what that, that idea is. Um, and then you start, uh, you, know, you start looking at your business model canvas Within that business model canvas, obviously, uh, in the revenue streams, you need to think about um, financial models, okay? Um, because you, you've got your, your research, but you, you need to f find out, actually, if this is something that is financially viable. So who here, and again, I know some of you um, are at completely different stages, um, but Chris, I'm going to come to you um, just because you've put yourself forward a few times. If if um, have you got to the stage when you thought about um, the the cost of um, you know setting up um, a, a restaurant or or a pizza service, um, and have you thought about what the cost implications and and how much money that you can make from that, and when potentially that you can break even from this? And that's the question to you, Chris. I don't know whether you're. I think you're still there. Yeah, I'm, I, I worry my budget might not be enough to set up. Okay, so um, again, again the, these are all things um, to think about. So let me give you an example, Chris. Um, if we were talking about a, a completely different uh, business concept, so um, let's just say we were talking about um, a, sh a shop that sells interiors or a shop that sells um, products. OK, um, you could start that business online initially. To be fair, you could do that with a, a, a pizza business. Um, you know, you can you can, um, you can uh, set up uh, on Deliveroo and, and places like that and have um, uh, a pizza business without each actually having a, a premises, uh, but having a premises where obviously it is uh, no, not like subways. Um, I'm talking about, um, and I don't know whether any of you are aware of this, but um, Deliveroo and some of the other, um, I think the other one's called Eat Something. Yeah, I can't remember because I only use Deliveroo. Um, but some of them actually have people that don't particularly have shop fronts, but what they do have, yeah, Just Eat, thank you. Um, they have um, premises that might be in, say, an industrial unit, and they will fulfill those pizza delivery orders uh, in a much smaller space that perhaps doesn't need seating and everything and that just has a takeaway service. The beauty of doing that is that you can test this first, okay? Um, so going back to like say if we were selling products or whether I was selling interiors or something like that, um, 
a lot of people that I know that have set up um, businesses, um, especially selling products, have tested the market first by selling online and building that audience online, then going offline, obviously, to premises. Because one thing that you do need to think about is, is, is when you're looking at premises, um, obviously, it's finding the, the, the right sites. Um, obviously, it's about um, making sure that that premises is then um, set up um, to be uh, attractive to, to customers. Uh, so it might be that you need to renovate the, the shop, uh, which you probably would. You've then obviously got all the implications like the pizza ovens, um, furniture is about building, um, you know, making sure that brand wise that, that you, you've built the, the brand. So I think the, the great beauty about the world that we live in now is that the Internet has allowed us to test using online first. And I think that's definitely something to think about um, before going, um, you know, full on into something that potentially um, is going to take a long, long time to get a return on investment. Um, but, you know, certainly thinking about um, uh, financial models, um, even at this very early stage, is, is something to think about. So, you know, with Chris, for example, and possibly with, with Don's, um, you know, uh, tech product, um, you know, another thing to think about is, is actually uh, if you do need capital, where you're going to get that capital from. Because people, you know, entrepreneurs generally don't start out just for the money, but the money is still needed to get that business off the ground. Um, and also it, it's about thinking, you know, I, I know plenty of um, tech businesses um, for the first couple of years, they won't make any money at all. Um, it takes a, to can sometimes take a, a number of years to build up um, the, the user base. Um, and then once you build up that user base, the revenue models will then come in. So obviously there's lots and lots of different types of business models. Some of them aren't as simple um, as perhaps um, you, you may think. So Chris, I'm just looking at your question now. Is there somewhere I can go online for info uh, of what to figure out cost-wise? Absolutely, yes, there is. Um, to be fair, you can find pretty much everything online. I'm more than happy um, to direct you. Um, so just connect with me on LinkedIn after the session and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, so someone here who I can just see is Anne. So when is a good time to approach investors for capital? Um, is there any, is there ever a good time? Okay, so I'll give you a really um, brief, uh, I, I've watched, I've listened to lots of pitches, okay? The best businesses that I know, um, and we've not even come on to the MVP bit, are, are ones that have got a working MVP and they've got customers lined up, okay? If I was an investor, um, I wouldn't be even be interested in giving anyone any money unless they had those, okay? An MVP. Right. So have a think about, um, you know, obviously you've got to have a really clear understanding about what problem you're solving, who your customers are, um, really looking at, um, you know, the, 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 who your competitors are, the size of the market, um, but also being able to say, um, you know, because people are just not going to give any money, money free. They just don't do it anymore. Um, and the, the most people that I know uh, on the investor side are far more respecting of um, entrepreneurs who were bootstrapped. Um, and yeah, so Don, investors want to see a risk reduce as much as possible, a good team they can believe in. Absolutely. And this goes back to my point before about having um, people that can support you. Um, and, and very much it's about having the right team because you can't do everything on your own. But again, you know, we've got probably people on this call that have got very, very different types of business ideas. Some of you uh, might have businesses very similar to mine where you're just going to be working on your own. And absolutely, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. So, again, depending on the type of business that you have, uh, one thing that I would highly recommend is an MVP. An MVP is a minimal minimal viable product okay what that does is it provides you with feedback that you need before putting your idea onto the market 
Um, and even before you've done this, there are certain things that you can do. So just to give you um, a bit of context here, another really great thing is to test the market is to do um, a, an MVP website. So just having a one page website um, where you're, you're asking a question, you might have a survey on there and this is where you can test. So uh, I know lots of, um, especially university entrepreneurs do this and what they do is they test their ideas um, with 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 consumers and, and people that potentially would buy those products um, and they do that by setting up a one-page website with links on there to a survey and then actually having real conversations with real people um, and being able to almost with an MVP uh, build about what that might look like um, so Don are they shareholders or investors uh, 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 in other works that their commitment so um, so share well shareholders aside sorry Don do you want to come onto the mic because I'm not sure what you're asking me uh, sorry that's it wasn't it was going back oh, to right, if you have okay. other people working part-time does that count as a team to investors uh, I was yeah. simply <laughs> saying have they have they got a piece of the action and now they bought in and are they committed then the yeah. part of your team they they are but i do i do know um i do know um lots of um entrepreneurs that have a team and a lot of those teams are part-time people but they will have perhaps shares or they will be being paid for what they're doing so they do have a vested interest um but it, it's something that that is really really important um to, to have the right team because obviously if people are investing in you they're going to know that, that what you're going to do with their money is 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 going to be ultimately building a business um, which is ultimately giving them a return on their investment. Um, but thank you, thank you, Don. Um, so I, I'm going to come back. Um, so a, anybody here? Uh, actually, Don, you're probably the only person because uh, nobody else has really said it yet. But you obviously have a, an MVP, uh, which you are in the process of testing. Uh, well, yes, uh, the in fact, when I, I did my uh, viability, it came yeah. up short, and that was yes. on two grounds: technical limitations and overall cost. Yeah, uh, technology has moved on since I did this, and now there's an opportunity, provided I can get the attention of some very big boys, and uh, I'm partnering, uh, hopefully, with uh, uh, a university commercialization function to actually get the ear of the big boys so that yeah. uh, I can make progress. Yeah, and I, I, this is this is the thing, because obviously, um, like you say, technology has um, moved on really rapidly. So um, just also just to give you um, a, a bit of context, just with some of the work that I do, um, I've been working with um, Host, uh, which was formerly called The Landing at Media City, and they have a, a number of um, programs for uh, especially around um, cyber security um, and also uh, AI um, and AR, VR and various other different things and what they have to support that um, is they have uh, the big boys so to speak um, in there to support um, technology um, around you know certainly people building things because people are building um ideas and products and services using other people's technology um but yeah there's 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 lots and lots of i think the great thing is 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 uh, i've certainly seen and i don't know whether any of you uh, else have um but i've seen a really big rise in people working for them for themselves um during the pandemic purely because uh you know some people that have lost their jobs, um, some people aren't fulfilled in what they're doing, but also people have seen that, that how easy it is to work from home. Um, but what I will say is it's an enormous um, uh, uh, amount of pressure working for yourself because not only, you know, you, you obviously uh, create um, a product or service, but you have to sell that product or service. Um, and until you have people um, in your team that can support that, uh, you're doing it all yourself. 
So you're wearing the hat of the marketer, the salesperson, the person that's doing the accounts, absolutely everything. Um, so Amazon, for example, Amazon are actually one of the partners that host. So it might be worth you having a, a look at some of the programs there uh, at, so, at some point. So talked about MVP and about getting feedback. Take feedback from um, those early potential customers. Uh, and if, for example, um, you know, if, it, if it's a service-based business, for example, and you have something that you can already sell and that you might have some early customers, keep in touch with them. Because this is really, really important, um, especially um, when, you're, you, when you're getting to the stage and you're thinking, okay, I've tested my idea, it, it seems to be a good idea. I'm getting I'm getting a little bit of traction here. Um, it might be that actually, and again, it's very different for different products and services. It might be that actually um, I've got some some people that that want to commit to working with me um, for a period of time. And and these initial customers are the ones that you can get feedback from, and and obviously keep in touch with them. But also. This is very much about how you stand out from your competitors. Um, let me just come back to, okay, there's no other questions. So, oh, Richard, you might as well run this session. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so I'm going to come to something else because I think a really, really important thing is, is to have an open mind. Um, be open to learning and trying um, different things. Um, I, I have um, a series of books that I swear by, um, and these are all in the Strategizer series. I don't know whether any of you can see them here, but there's one that's a business model canvas one. This one in particular is about business uh, testing business ideas. They're all about um, the £15, £20 mark. You can buy them secondhand on Amazon as well. Um, if, you are, if you are at university, um, obviously, um, you know, you, you can go into, um, and, um, please can you share them from here? So yes, I can. Just give me one second. Um, I will share them with you now. Um, and actually, I'm going to share the Strategizer website because you can get a lot of the content from there. Uh, just give me one second. So this is um, the website where you can get most of the books from you can probably get some of them cheaper from um, other book places but the great thing in, in, about this is there's a whole series um, of books um, I first came across them uh, when I was doing um, a master's uh, at M MMU and we all got the the value proposition design book um, as part of the program um, I'm just going to put in here here's the link so you can have a look at it later um, the authors um, of these books are David Bland and Asti Alex Osterwalter. Um, but you can get the books from the Strategize, Strategize the Series um, website, um, but also from other good bookstores. I don't want to say anyone in particular, um, but they are brilliant because what they do is they get you to think really, really simply. And I think it's really important to do this at this very early stage because I will remind you what we're talking about is turning an idea into something that would be a business. Um, so I've got a question. Um, um, Chris, obviously yours is quite obvious because it's pizza, people buying pizza and buying beer. Don, with your particular product, is this something that perhaps um, that consumers so, for example, um, you, you mentioned um, your, I think you said about your, your mother had tested this. Um, and, you know, this is something, she, she's uh, she's living independently, I take it. Is that correct? Well, she, she was, I'm afraid she's right. uh, departed now. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry about That's that. That's okay. It's um, not a problem. Yeah. Right. But, 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 for example, if she was living, because I don't know whether, you, whether you're aware of this, because... Um, 
councils um, and I wish it would have been great if you'd have been on this call that I was on before because you would have loved it it was very much about some of the things that you're talking about so um, the, the, com the IOT company that I'm working with um, they are working with um, councils and with housing associations and that's all, all, all to do with the internet things in homes and how they can get data to, to be able to um, help people live independently in their homes, which councils um, are now looking at um, to, you know, as overall to save costs. So it could be that, that, that what you're developing uh, could be something that could be socially subscribed, um, perhaps with um, care in the community or any number of things. And these are all things that to actually actually have a think about. So yeah, you just put in here Newcastle Council put 50k into a product using uh, project using technology. One thing I would have a look at, Don, and I don't know whether you've investigated this, um, but Innovate UK are constantly looking at people who can solve problems, especially around societal issues. Is that something that you've looked at? Uh, just a tick. Uh, yes, I've, I have been in contact with Innovate UK at, at different times. Yeah. Um, I, I, I desisted when I yeah. realised that with the existing technology, it really wasn't going to take off for yeah. the reasons I've mentioned. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm working with the uh, National Innovation Centre for Ageing, which is part of Newcastle University. Okay. And uh, that's the big body I'm, uh, boy that I'm hoping uh, will be able to take me and get me into the forefront with uh, either Google or Amazon, because yeah. they have the technology. They've actually got part of part of the solution, but they don't seem to have got the full picture. So there's a right. lot of progress to be made there. Yeah, no, def definitely. And th and this is the thing, it's about, um, you know, obviously your ideas sort of evolved and changed uh, over the years. Um, and, you know, uh, you, you've obviously have got that open mind because you're, you're, you're take feedback back and you're, you're obviously, you know, technology's moved on since uh, initially um, you, you had your idea. And I, I think this is, this is a really key thing because if you do your research and you have conversations with people, that's how you can um, not only uh, spot opportunities, but also by having conversations with people um, that allows you um, to, to help your idea evolve. Um, and it's about having the right conversations. Um, so, yeah, of course, you're definitely open, still young to be open minded. Um, but, you know, it's really fantastic, um, you know, to, to see that, that you, you're, you're still working on it because because you know ideas change all the time and as Richard just put in it's the evolution of ideas you know I, I work um, on several um, entrepreneurship programs and I can be working with somebody um, who perhaps applies to a program with one particular idea three months later at the end of the program their idea is completely different and again it's all about having that open mind to be able to say okay, do you know what, it's okay if this idea changes, um, because that, that's absolutely fine. Um, so just a couple of things to think about um, with regards to um, you know, the Business Model Canvas. The Business Model Canvas is um, a one-pager um, that you can look at uh, and obviously um, evolve um, as your idea goes, uh, goes through, obviously, different stages. Um, and this is also about keeping your ideas at that really initial stage um, quite rough um, because they will evolve through those testing stages. Um, I think another thing as well is, um, you know, focusing on, on products and technologies at the expense of what the business model is, um, you know, especially with a venture that's sort of propped up by an investor. Um, that's had in, inject, money injected it will, will you know f especially for a, a long time um, you know entrepreneurs need to accept um, the harsh truth a bad business model will make a great product fail okay so whatever your products or services you've got to embed that within a repeatable scalable 
and profitable business model. And that's why the, 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 the business model is, is really essential. It's a little bit like putting a puzzle together, okay? And I'm going to talk to you really quickly. Uh, so you've all heard of Nespresso. Uh, Nespresso is, um, they make coffee machines, okay? Um, their original business model um, offered a value proposition that locked customers in uh, to Espresso coffee machines and a consumable that generated recurring revenues from those customers, okay? Um, their entire business model um, worked towards the execution of this strategy, which made that business successful. So they had the coffee machine, um, but then they set up direct sales with the coffee pods. That's what their, uh, their, their business model was built around. So being able to sort of say, okay, this is the value proposition. These are the partners that I need. Um, this, is, this is the cost that's going to be involved in building this business. This is how I'm going to make money, um, which is in, in the revenue streams, because that's another thing as well. With, with the, the, the program that I did um, a, a couple of weeks ago that finished at the end of April, um, one of the things um, that, I, well, the, the things that we were talking about uh, was looking at different revenue streams. Most of the people um, that were on the program were freelancers and most of them had um, service-based businesses. So they would charge for their time or they would charge on a project-by-project -project basis. Um, and one of the things that I got them to think about was the different revenue streams that they could bring into. So how they could think about having a uh, passive income with courses around um, perhaps the services that they offered. So there's, there's obviously uh, websites like Udemy um, and um, several other ones, um, Learny um, or Learnific, Learnific or whatever it's called. Um, and that's very much around um, being able to say, okay, this is what I deliver on a day-to-day -day basis. How can I make that into um, a, a, a program that I can sell online that I've pre-recorded and actually I can go to sleep and people are buying that course. Also, another thing as well was looking at how you could have something, a downloadable product, again, um, in relation to what your, your product or service is. I'm gonna come back to the questions here. So, Elia, you just put in my business at start idea is a product to help small businesses improve their cyber resilience. How, where would you advise me for look, to look for people to speak to? So, again, this comes up to um, asking the right questions. So, for example, if I was you, um, the first thing I would do is put in a search term uh, in LinkedIn, for example, around uh, cyber resilience and small businesses. I would then look at groups on LinkedIn um, and go on to the groups and ask questions. Um, but I'm gonna, can I ask you to come to the mic, Elia, because I've just got a couple of questions for you. Because um, you're sort of talking about um, a product that is helping uh, businesses improve cyber resilience. Um, obviously, there's lots of uh, products in the market out there like that. So my first question to you would be, what research have you done around your competitors? And then can I ask you why you came up with this product idea in the first place? Um, right. So... Um... I've been doing research for quite a number of months. Yeah. And yeah, so so it's um not just like it's not a blanket um product that helps businesses yep. improve their cyber resilience. It does that by um providing training. Yeah. Like training um content and exercises that like um businesses and their employees can use. Okay. So yeah, I, I decided to focus on that because um, hum, I, I, like human um, human error or human exploitation is like yeah. the biggest um, thing that leads to to cyber attacks. Yeah. Like most cyber attacks um, happen because you know maybe someone made a mistake or a hacker like tricked someone into doing something. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I, I decided to focus on that, and um, I saw an opportunity because small businesses, well, 
a lot of mm-hmm. this is um, based on secondary research and some yeah. of it is assumptions as well. But small yeah. businesses um, don't really have the funds to like use um, the bigger platforms that already exist. Okay. So that, that's why I'm targeting small businesses specifically because I can I, I, I believe I can provide like a cost effective um, solution that they can use. And have you have you got something that you'll is this service something that you're going to be offering online or are you going to be going into people's premises? Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be online. I was considering the other option of like um, you know doing the training myself, but I thought it would be more more scalable. If I can yeah. just you know, focus on optimizing the content base and all the different exercises, and then because, you know, because how you could test your idea, you could quite yes. easily um, go on to you know, if you had like, and I'm going to show you an example now. So just let me just give me one second while I just find it. Um, so okay. Udemy, for, Udemy, for example, is um, on-demand online courses. I don't know whether you've heard of it before. Um, yeah, you can. I, Pretty, pretty much learn anything and everything. And um, if you did a search on there uh, with regards to cyber, because more and more sp- small businesses are using platforms like Udemy. So, for example, um, if you just put in um, cyber security um, and did a search for cyber security, which I'm just doing now, I'm just going to give you an example here. Um, so, let me just come to the screen and I'm going to share my screen so you can have a look at what I'm looking at. Um, because it could be that you initially um, do something on here first. So let me just share my screen and I will um, show you. So I've just done a quick search. I literally just put in cyber. I didn't put in security. If we put in, if we change it and I put in cyber security and I'm going to put in SME. Um, or I could put in small business. Yeah, let's click on that and see if there's anything specifically for small businesses. Uh, so let's have a look. And obviously, this is dependent on. So it's coming up with ten thousand results, right? Wow. Um, and you know that's a lot. Uh, you can see here this this particular person here has a course, uh, cybersecurity basics for small digital business owners. Um, it says in there what you learn, and then you've obviously got the price point in here. But you can also see that this is a two-hour course, and it's broken mm-hmm. up into 12 um, different lectures. What I would do if I was you, I would test the market on something like this um, because you can get an idea of the, the different types of customers that would sign up, but also it's about finding specifically what your niche is. Because you can see in here, you know, that there'll be there's lots and lots of courses around that, but you've got to work yeah. out how you're going to stand out from the market and, and what you've got that is different. So my question to you is, um, what qualifies you um, to be able to do this? Or are you using other people to help you deliver this service? Um, yeah, what... what qualifies me is that I've been I mean I've been studying a master's in cyber security for yeah. over a year now and I've been yeah. I've also gained like some industry certifications yeah brilliant so you're, you're so, more than qualified <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I I hope my customers would believe yeah. that yeah but yeah yeah that's um that that's what um I'm relying on but I'm also um, open to like I'm also looking for people I can um, partner with to you know be able to uh, like like people that are already doing um, security awareness um, trainings I, I, I want to like talk to them and see what they're experienced with people that have dealt with small businesses as well so are you are you based at, are you at Salford Uni yes okay so so can I can I um can I give you some advice just based on what you've got at the university? So um, if you are um, connected to um, the um, career, so Justine, have you, you know Launch? Yes. Right, okay, so Launch it would be a great platform for you to test your ideas, right? Okay? Because Launch is connected to um, the Business Growth Hub, 
um, if you're not uh, aware of what the business growth hub is, uh, the business growth hub is um, Bayes, uh, Justina Turner, um, is Bayes, is supported by money from Bayes and, and other places, and they support small businesses. Um, you can get access to small businesses and have conversations there, but also the business school, the business school, um, I, I'm chair of the industry advisory board at the business school, and they're very much um, connected to lots of businesses. So do you, do you know what? It's really simply about you asking um, to speak to businesses that perhaps the university are already engaged with and testing mm -hmm. your hypothesis and your ideas about what they'd be looking for. Because, you know, if you, if, if, I, would, I would also say have a look at the Udemy thing. Yes. Know, have a look at see what other people are offering um, and then seeing how you can um, tailor and differentiate yourself in the market. Um, so another quick, quick question um, really quickly is mm -hmm. when you leave university, are you staying in Manchester or are you going somewhere else? No, I'm staying here. Okay, so you st you're stay staying in Manchester. So I was just saying, were you going to London or whatever? So another another really important thing that I would do is um, I would have a look and start going uh, going to events like this, for example, going into the business community in 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 Manchester. A really great one is the Federation of Small Businesses. Um, they have um, a, a network within Greater Manchester. Also, the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and if I remember rightly, the Chamber of Commerce actually have something at the university business school. Um, and they will be able to give you access to businesses that you could ask these questions to. Because it is, it's something that you need to do, um, but it's also really finding out how you can um, be able to um, build your product or service um, to um, serve the, the potential customers and what the SMEs need you to the, you know the problems that they need you to solve um, but I, I hope that that's helped yeah that's that's really helpful thanks um Thank that, you. like uh, just, there's just one more question i wanted to ask yeah no problem um i've been looking at like other um services that i mean other companies that, that offer like similar services yeah and I, i'm trying to do competitor analysis you know to try and yeah you know get my unique um, value proposition yeah yeah but what my like what, what what i'm unsure of right now is how to um like i've found similar services but do i like categorize everyone as a competitor or does it have to be someone that is based in the uk because no, like, some of them no, are based no. in the us yeah, no, I, I would also say that those US businesses are your potential competitors as well. Um, I, I think it's I think it's worth looking at, um, you know, at the overseas market as well. Um, but it's about how you can, you know, if you're going to be based in Manchester, most of your businesses may be greater Manchester based. Um, mm -hmm. You will you will also find um, and, and I, again, I've seen this more and more. There's been more cyber attacks and scams during the pandemic than there ever was before yes. and, and, and small businesses are really ignorant about it you know i'm talking about those micro businesses so uh, the definition of a micro business is a business that's turning over no more than two million and has mm -hmm. uh, i think it's less than 10 employees so it, it's it's you know there's with the Federation of Small Businesses for example, um, they will have um, that reach. But it, it's it's really about you saying, okay, these are the problems that I've identified. This is the impact of you if you don't take cybersecurity seriously. This is the impact that it's going to have on your business. Yes. Okay. Um, and then and then you saying. By using your services and your cybersecurity training, this will stop you have uh, being open to cyber attacks, um, but also making meet people more knowledgeable. Um, and, and another another thing as well is, you know, if you don't want to say do the Udemy thing, do something on Eventbrite. Uh, go on to Eventbrite and see who's talking, who's doing, who's doing um, workshops on cybersecurity. 
um, having a look and see who's talking about it online. So you can do that obviously on Twitter, but you can do it on LinkedIn. And building up your LinkedIn connections, I think, is a really good basis. But really, just asking those questions and asking as many questions as possible. Um, yeah. that, that's a really important. Lisbeth is also just put in the chat um, about a, a new program uh, launch global uh, for international students where they have a, a pot of £20,000. So I don't know whether that's something that would be applicable to you also. Yeah, def definitely. Um, I, I yeah. applied. Um, I mean, I, I, I filled the form. Brilliant, brilliant. Already, so I've been getting the emails. That's good, that's good. So that, that's worth having a look at as well. But it's, it's just really, it's just about having those conversations and being able to sort of, you know, start with that initial business model canvas, maybe sort of seeing what that might look like but then also looking at the different revenue streams that you could you could do, but also what the financial model looks like as well for you. So it might be, for example, that you just need a website. You can build a website yourself, right? It might yes. be that you need to uh, build in resources to accompany the sessions that you do. So it might be that you create some downloadable products because then you don't have to print stuff. You then have, um, you know, obviously you've got a domain name, so you'll, you'd have to register a domain name. You've then got uh, the associated emails that go with that. And all, of course, um, that there may be other things that you might need to, to use as well. So again, with the, with the business model canvas, because it's like that one page overview, you've obviously got the list of costs in there as well. But good luck with everything. Um, I'm going to come back to Sarah's question. So any suggestions or recommendations for building a website? So Sarah, can I ask you to come okay, on the uh, mic? No problem, thank you. Um, Sarah, if, you, if I can ask you to come on the mic really, really quick, I've just got a yeah. question for you. So is yours a product or a service? It's a product. Okay. So most people um, uh, build um, Shopify websites. I think that seems to be the most common thing, common one. But you can also, you know, you can do that through Wix. Um, it, there are so many brilliant template websites. It's actually very easy to do it yourself. I think it's um, the problem of deciding, you know, who's yeah. legit, who's who's a good yeah. bet on on doing it, you know, that doesn't yeah. cost a, a fortune. Because I'm not going to go massive with this. It's a very specific sort of um, photography. I manipulate photography in a particular area of the country. Um, okay. I buy. I would want. I want to do canvases and, and photography things but I also want to I as a person when I go on yeah. holiday I want to be able to buy matching tea towels matching notelets yeah. matching things I want to put all that together but you know it's whether or not to just start with the photography first and get your name known and then to expand or whether to go full hog so that like me comes along and I'm like oh my gosh they've got a tea towel that matches I've got to have that yeah um so it's it's about I'm I'm really creative person and motivated for myself love my products yeah. and I'm I would buy them, but it's whether other people. I've, I'm on a site at the moment with over a what thousand. Which site people. are you on? Um, which site are you on? It's like a just like a you know like a place where people put pictures of the of the place that they love. Um, okay. So, but it is sort of like a thousand people that love yeah. the place which I'm interested in as well. So yeah. I want to reach out to them, of course, but you know it's not really an advertising site. Um, but I would get permission from the. I've already asked the owner of the site um, if I could sort of not advertise as such, but maybe as you suggest, do a survey or to find out yeah. if these products actually. You know, there's no point in making it, having somebody, a company, make them and and have a hundred whatever in, um, and then not so sell them. You know, but I so would buy them. So th this, this is the thing, Sarah, and I think asking those questions initially before you. So I'm going to give you an example. So I have a friend who uh, thought he had a brilliant idea about a place that he loved. Mm -hmm. And he got a, a series of prints made uh, in a specific style, like a thousand of them at Gosh. great expense. <laughs> and none, they didn't sell. No. Okay. I, so the beauty, the beauty of 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 um, the way the world is now is that obviously you've got things like drop shipping and stuff like that. So what you could what you could do without any initial outlay is set up 
with a uh, somebody else who does the printing, etc., um, still sell it on your website, but actually it's it's made uh, to order yeah. rather than you having to pay that. That's what I would do if I was you. And and if that was the case, you know, obviously you've got Squarespace, you've got places like you've got things like Wix. Uh, I'm a big fan of Wix because. It's literally Is that W I C K. I no, I've never heard w, of any of these. W, w, w I X. It's Wix.com. Uh, oh, yeah, the other I've one heard of that. the other the other one's called Squarespace. But with Wix and and Squarespace, what they have is they have um, additional things that you can add on. So you can add a shop on, you can add various other different bits. Obviously you can do that on WordPress as well. Personally, I am petrified of WordPress. I just can't get my head around it. I I'm want something as simple as possible. And, and, and I would say that Wix or Squarespace would be for me. But I would also have a look at, you know, uh, if, you, if you put in, uh, you know, how to build, what's the best uh, platform for building a Spotify website, that will also uh, come up with lots of information yeah. on, the, on the internet view as well. I've looked at options like um, Etsy and things like that, but they take yeah. quite a good cut of your product um and but they, know, they, just, they they do but then you know what you've got to think about is they've got the um, platform of, of customers yeah you know. they've got the, they've got the platform of the customers and it's very similar so you know when i was talking to um Aliyu before about udemy um so udemy is a courses website and udemy uh, do lots of advertising for people to come to their platform and learn stuff okay so they yeah. already have a, an audience of people coming to the Udemy website, very similar to Etsy, okay? Uh -huh. Very similar to not on the high street, but of course you have costs involved in that and it's weighing up whether you wanna put all of your time and effort into promoting your own website or whether you wanna put all your time and effort uh, in, in, in addition to what Etsy is already doing. That's where you've got to ask that question. And actually Etsy is probably a great place to test your ideas that's yeah. what I would say yeah um, because you. you know another thing also to, to consider Sarah is is uh, especially with, with you know selling products is you've obviously got to build up what that brand's going to look like um, build up um, you know a social media presence because again a lot of people that I know that are selling products well to be fair with services as well you, you constantly um, you know promoting and telling your story and you know a great way to sort of um, blend that is let's just say you just did decide to sort of try Etsy is mm -hmm. actually you combine that with doing a really great campaign um, on social media but right you know again finding out the right social media platforms to support that particular uh, product and, and service and again that is very much around the type of customers that are going to buy your product it's it's really you know again Richard's just put in there about telling your story people are genuinely interested in and if we talk about you about why why do you love this place so much and talk about it uh, for me and, and, yeah it has an emotional uh, yeah. and a holiday it makes me happy yeah and I I want to go away from that place with something to remember it by yeah um, and I know other people have and on this sort of little you know chat thing that uh, grew up in in uh, lockdown people yeah. just put on this place to help uh, us all feel amazing because we yeah. all love it and it and yeah. it does have a good vibe so but, you know but, they, this is this is this is the thing you know if you've got lots of memories in there when you're selling these products and again this is why I think it's re it's really important to test it because what you don't want to do is spend that a load of money building a load of products which you can't sell if you do yeah. the Etsy thing you can just test test it but the great thing is on social for example you can tell your story but also you can use your memories as part of that storytelling around that space. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, a really brief example, um, you know, and I've got no idea where this space is, but, you know, my childhood memories uh, of the uh, North Devon coast, because that's where my grandparents lived. Um, that's where we used to go on holiday. And those memories, um, you know, hold a, a special place in my heart because that's where my childhood was. So, again, it's about thinking about those emotional connections to your customers yeah. and why and that that's what will make those things sell quicker 
So again, you, you've, there's, there's lots of things that you need to think about. But if we went, if we, if you go back to the business, business model canvas, for example, um, in partners, Etsy would be in in the partners section. Yeah. You know, if, if we yeah. sort of look back to, to say the, the Uber, Uber one, it, it's looking at okay, this is how this fits in, and these are all the partners. Because also another partner of yours would be the fulfillment people. So you know, great picture. What you can do with this picture, where we can do this, this, and this with it, and it might be that actually you commission people to you know uh, perhaps an artist or or somebody else to do bespoke pieces around that again it, it's, it's all about testing the market and yeah. finding out we, what your customers want i mean this this thing that um I, this chat group you know people share their, their holiday their memories their stories their pictures i mean i i ended up taking a seagull home once from this place <laughs> and, and rearing it um and letting it out um ago so there's there's a lot of stuff in there and, and so, people so, love that so you you really need to speak to that you need to be able to speak about your business ideas to those people i hope hope you can get that permission to do that because i i think that they, they're obviously your ideal customers but what you also need to think about is obviously that's a group of uh, did, you, did you say i can't really said a thousand people um, yeah there's that, a that, thousand yeah. people joined this group and yeah. more and yeah. more keep joining yeah um, but i've also you know had um my own like canvases done cups done i've i've sort of done things to see how they look to see yeah. what the product would look like uh so that i can also take pictures of it and show uh you know and do it on a website and things to show people what what they are but i haven't really found um you know when you i i'm buying from a mainstream place yeah um and so you know my i'm i'm getting some Groupon vouchers from this place as well to help but I won't be able to do that if the orders come streaming in um, so I'm having to think about cost and how much people would pay for those things yes yeah. and, and again uh, so I'm going to find yeah. um, places that would do you know the what do you call it drop, I've drop lost the, you know not the full thing the uh, so drop, trade drop yeah yeah the trade sort of prices it's trying to find someone who to go into yeah. uh, where i can actually make a profit on it rather than you know giving are, are them you, the money are you based are you based in manchester no shropshire shropshire okay so um one, one thing that that's probably worth um just just you know having a look at you you will have a, a business growth hub in your area um that's tied to the council so if you okay. if you look if you check up um business support um in shropshire yeah it will, it will direct you to your local business growth hub um so not only can they help you um with that really initial early ideas but going back to this group of a thousand people obviously you need to ask them but i what i would say is that you need to look beyond those thousand people and find other people that also love that space because if you are going to stick to one particular um product i can move around but yeah, i yeah i've got a total passion for that place and yeah. so the people that live there and work there and, and visit so you know it I, I know it is hard but i won't take any more of other people's time but thank no, you so much that, thank you and good luck with everything sarah thank you very much okay no problem so uh, everyone we are at the end of the session there will be a recording of this which i think that you'll be able to look at another time um i'm more than happy to connect with anyone on linkedin but thank you so much for your time um if anyone has any further questions uh, you know where to find me um i hope i have given you a really brief because i know it was only an hour and a half but but just some things to have a think about um thank you so I think, Elizabeth, we can stop the recording.